Welcome. Merry Christmas. We typically have a service at 11 o'clock, and for various reasons, we're not doing that this year, but I'm glad that you're here celebrating, either with your family or um, by yourself, perhaps because you're alone tonight, or perhaps because everyone else is in bed and you care about carols and the Christmas story just a little more than they do. The Episcopal Church now lights the first candle for the hope for all of God's people, the second candle for the prophets who spoke love and truth to the people of Israel. The third week, they celebrate John the Baptist and his extraordinary story, and the fourth week, Mary. Now, we typically follow a more orthodox tradition of faith, hope, love, and peace. The Episcopalians used to light the four candles, and they symbolized death, judgment, heaven, and hell. In each of those stories, we're reminded that there is incredible power and kingdom finality to the incarnation of Jesus. And yet, we also wait, like the Israelites did for hundreds of years for Jesus, and that is for his return. Advent gently invites us into a similar tension. And I'm glad you're with us tonight for our lessons and carols. I'm going to begin with the book of Luke, who wrote... Inasmuch as many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the things that have been accomplished among us, just as those who were from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word have delivered them to us. It seemed good to me also, having followed all things closely for some time past, to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, that's you, lover of God, literally in the Greek, that you may have certainty concerning the things you have been taught. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the division of Abijah. And he had a wife from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And there appeared to him an angel of the Lord, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And Zechariah was troubled when he saw him, and fear fell upon him, because it was an angel. And the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will, be a, he will be great before the Lord. And he must not drink wine or strong drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go before him, meaning Jesus, in the spirit and power of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. I want you to catch as much of this as I can, can, can portray in a minute. Because I want you to be encouraged, but we're here to sing about our faith. Luke was a second-generation Christian. He witnessed some of the miracles of the early church, but not Jesus, but he spoke with hundreds of people who did. He gave an extraordinarily accurate account of the life of Jesus in the book of Luke and then of the history of the early church in the book of Acts. Archaeology continues to affirm it. And what I want that to I want that to encourage you in two ways. One, that the gospel that we trust is historical. It is not simply an idea. It is not even a religion per se. It is based upon historic events that were accurately recorded. Two, I want you to be encouraged that many have gone before us in the faith. And that is to encourage us. There's a church in our presbytery that has been around for over a hundred years, and they went back and read their session minutes from 1919. And among other things, we're so encouraged by how that church prayed and how the elders chose to lead with their windows open and in light of waiting and, and, and as they waited on the science. The second part that I want to encourage you is that John the Baptist is one of the coolest figures in the Bible. And the biblical definition of cool is, knows who God is, knows who he is. John had an incredible role and he had no pride about it. And what he got to do is say, there's a kingdom now available. And so we sing with hearts full of faith because that kingdom is now ours, but we also are waiting. Oh, come. 
Come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Sing choirs of angels, sing in exultation, sing all ye citizens of heaven above. Glory to God, all glory in the highest. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Yea, Lord, we greet thee. On this happy morning, Jesus, to Thee be all glory given. Word of the Father, Thou in flesh appearing, O come, let us adore Him, O come, let us adore Him, O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. And the angel Gabriel came to Mary and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be troubled at the saying. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped to serve in Israel in remembrance of his mercy." as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his offspring forever. You know when you get that text and it says, can we chat? And you feel a little bit nervous? I think that's a little bit, a, li a little bit like what's going on with Mary. The angel, Gabriel, says something, two very, favor very vague things to her, and she's nervous. But in her nervousness, she waits. He essentially said, you're amazing, and she didn't know him, so she was nervous. But then they have this lovely and beautiful conversation where she finds out that her son is going to be in the line of David, which is king, but also over Jacob. I think that's a reckoning with the, or that's an allusion to the stars. Jesus took, God took Abraham, Jesus also took Abraham out and showed him the stars and says, your offspring will outnumber these. And there will be no end to his kingdom. A kingdom fully accessible to us by faith now, but invisible. I want to say this last thing about Mary. She knew her Bible. She knew it with her head and with her heart. This is why we continue to sing. Because faith is not simply received religion. It is not simply intellect. It is also emotional and, and the confidence of our very being. Stem hath 
strong of Jesse's lineage coming as men of old have sung. It came a flowered bright amid the If you know the story of Elizabeth and Zachariah and John, you know after the scripture that we read, Zachariah struggled a little bit, probably because he was a professional follower of God, and we sometimes just get all wrapped up in our own head, and it leads to pride. It's the difference between he and Mary. But his second response is a beautiful one. After he's allowed to speak again, he says this, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our father Abraham to grant us, that we being delivered from the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days and you child talking about john the baptist will be called the prophet of the most high for you will go before the lord to prepare his ways to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our god whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our way in the way of peace. Zechariah, like Mary, honored God. But we have this moment where Zechariah, I believe his, his pride or his, perhaps his skepticism gets in the way. And the reason I bring that up to you without reading it is, it reminds us that God is the God of second drafts and second chances and always ready even before our thought that led us to realize our need, always ready to extend grace upon grace. John, his son, prepares us for that message. Jesus preaches it, and we sing in response to it. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled Joyful all ye nations rise Join the triumph of the skies With angelic host proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, Glory to the newborn King. Angels we have heard on high, Sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply echo back their joyous strains. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Come to Bethlehem. 
angels of birth, the angels sing. Come adore on bended knee, Christ the Lord, the newborn King. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Jesus, Lord of heaven and earth, Mary, Joseph, lend your aid, with us sing our Savior's birth. Gloria in excelsis Deo, Depending on how deeply you reflected on Mary and Zachariah's prophecy and song and the words of the angels, you might be run wondering, when is this going to happen? Where is it going to happen? And what's it going to look like? We turn to the next chapter of Luke, and he writes, In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Historical facts and people verified when this happened. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, fear not. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. I assume that story is familiar to you, but recognize the first big move of the kingdom of Jesus is to go to those that the culture thought nothing of and give them perhaps the most spectacular appearance of angels ever in the history of the world. The kingdom is not about the powerful. In fact, it thwarts them. The kingdom is not, in theory, about the forgotten one. The kingdom goes to the literal forgotten ones of the culture, shows them a host of mighty warriors, and extends to them the offer of the gospel. The first who knelt to the king were those that society has forgotten. What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping, whom angels greet with anthems sweet, while shepherds watch our keeping? This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Why lies he in 
such mean estate where ox and ass are feeding. Good Christian fare for sinners here, the silent word is pleading. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the Son of Man. town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above. While mortals sleep, the angels keep their watch of wandering love. O oh, morning stars together proclaim the holy birth, and praises sing to God the King, and peace to men on earth. So the vaccine was announced, and I assume you felt some measure of relief, depending on how depending on all sorts of things. And yet, has anything changed around us that we can see? No. But has everything changed? Yes. The Bible encourages us almost page by page with the tension of the joy of the with God life experienced in a world of sin and brokenness and alienation from God and from one another. The vaccine puts into sharp relief our great need to be out from under this pandemic. And at the same time, it's going to be a little while before it's distributed as widely as we will need to release some of our anxiety. It was not a silent night when Jesus was born, except perhaps in the kingdom that we cannot see, where the forces of darkness and evil could not believe that God would cross over and become flesh. Beams of light did not shoot from his face, but far more profoundly, far more powerfully, the dawn of redeeming grace indeed happened that very night. And so as it is almost the darkest time of the season, we yet celebrate a great light as it came into the world that saves us and frees us into the kingdom life, and even calls us to be agents of shalom, justice, and love for God and neighbor. Silent night, holy night, Shepherds quake and 
at the sight. Glory stream from heaven afar. Heavenly hosts sing alleluia. Christ the Savior is born. Christ the Savior is born. Silent night, holy night, Son of God, love's pure light, radiant beams from thy holy face, with the dawn of redeeming grace. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. The vaccine presents to us such an interesting moment to reflect on Advent. I try not to do this often, and especially not with the pandemic, and yet it exists. How anxiety relieving, and yet it is not with all of us physically yet, and so we continue to wait. Advent presents to us a similar relief, forgiveness for sins, light, full access to God, and yet he hasn't returned. Sharper even perhaps than the tension surrounding the celebration of Jesus' resurrection is the celebration of his incarnation. And yet we sing and we believe and we long to be gripped as powerfully as we can be by the fact that redeeming grace has indeed dawned. The kingdom was silent. The spiritual forces of darkness and evil because God crossed over that you and I might get to be with him forever and ever and even become his agents of shalom and justice and love for God and neighbor as we close tonight, go in the knowledge that redeeming grace has dawned and will carry us forever. Merry Christmas. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ While fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy Repeat, repeat the sounding joy He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love
Thank you.